Good evening, everyone. Wow, what a packed room. I've never seen it this, this packed. So honored to have all of you here. <laughs> I'm Andrew Dalton, and I'm the executive director of the Adams County Historical Society and Beyond the Battle Museum. And I see all of your stickers, so I'm sure some of you have been through the museum. Others, hope, we hope you'll uh, take advantage of seeing it over the next few days. And uh, we preserve millions of historic artifacts and records and documents and photographs that uh, tell the story of this community, Gettysburg, the people, the place. Uh, and today, of course, is the 160th anniversary of the first day of the Battle of Gettysburg. So uh, it is an honor to be here uh, with so many folks uh, who have made such an impact on the way that history is consumed and presented and loved uh, by people around the country, around the world. Uh, so with, without a lot more of an introduction, I'm going to just give a very brief couple lines about our four distinguished guests this evening. And starting on this end is my good friend Gary Edelman, who is the author, co-author, editor of more than 30 books and articles concerning Civil War and uh, other topics. He is the vice president of the Center of Civil War Photography and has been a licensed battlefield guide at Gettysburg for more than a decade. And he works currently as the chief historian at the American Battlefield Trust. Thank you, Thanks, John. Thank you. Next, we have uh, J.D. Hewitt, is the, who is the creator of the History Underground YouTube page. And, uh, yeah. Wow, wow look at that. that. Wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Those of us who know J.D. know two things. He loves meat and only eats meat. <laughs> and, and two, you know, a lot of us know he is sort of a dumb redneck, and we don't know how he's gotten so famous. Wow. <laughs> True story. He did tell me to say that. that. Hey, okay. just, uh, just to clear a few things up, I also eat macaroni and cheese and potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Yep. Next, we have Chris Mowry, uh, who is uh, very good. Look at that. Lots of Chris, Chris fans here tonight. Wonderful. He is from Northeast Ohio, where his most important job is being a husband and father of three. And we have one of uh, his three here tonight. Very nice. Uh, to and uh, he was introduced to history uh, through Ken Burns' documentary when it first came out. And uh, of course, his channel's Vlogging Through History, which he'll tell you more about. Chris is also a professional genealogist, and he's written eight family history books and is working on another nonfiction book about the 20th Ohio Infantry. So we are excited to have him here tonight. All right. And last, but certainly not least, the man in front and behind the camera in thousands of videos that you all love on YouTube, Chris White, who is the Deputy Director Woo! of Education at the American Battlefield Trust. Chris served as a Ranger Historian for nearly five years at Fredericksburg and Spotsylvania National Military Park. He's also the co-founder and Chief Historian of Emerging Civil War, which I'm sure many of you have checked out online. It's a great, great site. And uh, he has authored, co-authored, or edited nearly two dozen books and frequently leads tours in the United States sure. and abroad. Please join me in thanking all four of our wonderful guests here tonight. Thanks. So I think I have to sit still for an hour now. <laughs> so this is going to be somewhat How difficult. How are you going to move your hands if you're holding them like that? <laughs> uh, uh, we'll work it out. Um, so we're just going to go uh, right from JD to Chris and Chris, and before long, I'll figure out a way to know which Chris I'm talking about here. Um, but right away with JD, you know, it's clear we have some partisans here based on some of the rampant applause in different parts of the room here for different partisans. So not everybody knows about all these channels, so you get less than one minute, okay? One what minute. is the History Underground, and, you know, what do you do? Uh, so History Underground is uh, a, an education-based history YouTube channel uh, that really has two different tracks that, that, that run the channel. Uh, one is a series called History Traveler, uh, which focuses on, obviously, travel to places of history, uh, you know, of historic importance. Uh, wasn't very clever with that name, now that I think about it. <laughs> but, um, uh, and then the other one is a series called American Artifact, which is in partnership with the Gettysburg Museum of History, um, which kind of focuses on 
artifacts. <laughs> so. Good, good. Let's move over to vlogging through history. So I started my channel in 2020 as a way to document my, just to vlog visiting historic sites. And then COVID happened and shut everything down. And so I just had a channel sitting there and somebody suggested that I should start doing reaction videos to other people's history content. And I hated reaction videos. I thought it was a terrible idea. And I did it and the channel blew up. And so I kept on doing it. And now I've done like 900 of them. Um, but really, reaction is the wrong word. I really, what I'm doing is I'm using that content as a textbook to have a deeper conversation about those topics. Uh, and it also occasionally allows me to shine a light on channels that other people maybe have not been introduced to yet which has been an awesome thing. And, uh, and I still do the, the traveling and the documenting of historic sites, but the reactions are what allow me to do that kind of fun stuff. Good, thanks, Chris. And I'm, you know, based on a few hats in the room, I'm really curious in, in hearing about this next organization on the end there. Uh, that's the American <laughs> Battlefield Trust? Yeah, I'm sure you haven't heard of us. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the American Battlefield Trust, for those of you who don't know, um, is a land preservation organization. We're based in Washington, and we preserve battlefield lands associated with the American Revolution, War of 1812, and the Civil War. Our YouTube channel, as well as our, our Facebook um, page, is really an outlet for our education team in many ways, as well as our development team and others, to get the message out there about you know, what lands we want to preserve, uh, what challenges we face here as preservationists. And then, of course, we want to have people engage with history in a meaningful manner because uh, preserve, educate, and inspire are our three, you know, our tagline, even though I think educate should be first because um, that's our department. But that's what we do. We try to get out there. We try to get people interested in history through a really exciting way of engaging. And usually there's a lot of arm waving and a guy who does his false starts a lot. And that would be him down in the end. Thanks, Chris. Over to Chris Mowry. You know, you mentioned that the channel blew up. I mean, looking at where you are now, I mean, could you have, did you have any idea? Not a clue. Not a clue. I. I, I had a thousand subscribers after several months and then in the span of three months it was a hundred thousand and it just happened so fast like I didn't even know what happened. It just never intended to start the channel with the idea that it would turn into a full-time thing which it has for me now. It's totally unexpected. All right, and Chris White, same thing about the trust. When you arrived at the trust, uh, we didn't really have much of a video program. No, we had about 12,000 um, subscribers to our YouTube channel. Now we're up to about 360,000. That's a huge team effort having to do that. And a lot of it comes back to Gary coming up with this idea to go to a place live and um, bring people who can't always travel around the you know, country, um, bring them right to where the history happened. And then we came up with the ideas to bring stuff to these places, like we did today on Little Round Top with uh, Governor Kimball Warren's field glasses. So, you know, we try to intersect all that together and make it interesting for folks. All right, and JD, same thing, since we're jealous of your number of subs. <laughs> uh, the, the question was, did I ever see? Did you have any idea? Zero. No, I had no idea. Um, the, the genesis for my channel actually came from a group of high school students. Um, I had, I, I've told this story before, but um, I had just used my phone to record some things at the Air Force Museum in, uh, in Dayton, Ohio, and then showed it to this group of high school students, and, and they said, hey, that was actually pretty good. You know, that, that was interesting. You know, they not, said, not, you know, positively tolerable. Yeah, I, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> They said, uh, you, you ought to make a YouTube channel with some of the places that you go. And uh, you know, I have a, a background in, in film and television and stuff like that. Uh, they said, you ought to make a YouTube channel. And, and I said, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Uh, <laughs> no, nobody will ever watch that. Uh, but they, they kept pushing me, and I yeah, ended up rolling with it. And I thought, well, if it, if it provides value maybe to some other teachers or, or people can find uh, value in it in some way, then yeah, give it a whirl. All right, cool. I, I think this will be fun. You know, we, we, we're going to talk about the substance of, uh, of doing this or why we shouldn't and whatnot. But I am curious, you know, we'll start with Chris White on this one. Um, you know, what's a particularly memorable experience? Everybody who does this stuff knows that being on video a lot changes you or your life to some extent, especially when you go to certain places. So, Chris, what's a particularly memorable one? I'll just say that I've had people, I hope you're not here, like spawn out of the bushes to come up to me. It's like, you know, I witnessed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was 7 a.m. at my hotel. Uh, you know, I had my TSA agent last year check my thing. Okay, sir, you ready? Oh, and then he looked up from my license and like saw that. So there's all these cool experiences. Chris, what comes to mind? 
Um, we've got to do a lot of cool things. And, and just to pull back the curtain for a moment, people think that Gary and I just speak about history constantly. We take a lot of road trips together. We drive, and usually we quote movies. Um, and I mean, <laughs> that, that's it. That, that's what we do. It's Star Wars, it's movies, or whatever. And one of my favorite things that we did was one of our first live swings ever. It might have been our first live swing, and it goes back to the movie The Rock. We got to go underneath Alcatraz, mm. and that was one of the oh, coolest damn. things. Um, this guy call, uh, emailed Gary out of the blue. We get a lot of those emails, hey, you should come here. And it's like, uh, should we come here? And he's like, I'm the friends of the Alcatraz for Civil War Alcatraz. And, and it turns out Steve was awesome. He got us over there underneath. It was like Pee Wee Herman trying to find the basement of the Alamo, but it actually existed. <laughs> See a movie reference right there. <laughs> well done, Chris. And I'll just say, like, there's this time some guy from West Point emailed me about coming up and doing some sort of a Zoom thing. And I was just like, no, we'll go there and you'll bring Warren's field glasses down to Little Round Top and I'll get Little Round Top opened. And bam, it's just crazy, <laughs> uh, this world we're in. Uh, let's go to JD and then Chris. Of was, what was some of the strange, one of the strangest things? No, no, we'll get on to that one. Oh, oh. <laughs> a little bit later. Memorable. What, what's memorable. something that really stands out? It could be strange, I guess. Okay, well, it's, it's not really strange. Probably the most memorable experience that I've had since having the, the YouTube channel. Uh, I, I had a, a friend, he, he's passed away, you know, about three or four years ago, um, by the name of Reed Stevens, who was a machine gunner in the 7th Armored Division, um, was in the Battle of the Bulge, was, was captured there. And uh, I had the opportunity to travel back, uh, or to travel to Belgium, and uh, I had, you know, spent a lot of time, you know, hearing his stories and, and things like that. Uh, worked with a, a local historian there, and actually went to the area where he was captured and found the foxholes in the vicinity of where he was, and, and called him uh, while I was there and, and talked to him. And it, that was, I, I don't know what I'll do, you know, from here on out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll ever have an experience that, that tops yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all downhill from here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I got spine tingles today on Little mm -hmm. Round Top with, with an artifact that hadn't been there since the battle mm -hmm. and will never be there again, probably, yeah, from what we were told. Amazing. Um, well, let me, uh, and Chris, same thing. So uh, I was on a tour last year with a group of guys from Band of Brothers, which I know many of you have seen. And uh, we, one of the actors was uh, Mark Lawrence, who portrayed Dukeman who was killed at a battle called the Crossroads in the Netherlands. And we went to the site of the Crossroads and I was walking next to Mark and we were talking and I said, you've been here before, right? And he said, no, this is the first time I've ever been here. We were in the process of walking to the site where Dukeman was killed. And here was a man who for the last 20 years, Dukeman has been in just a central part of his life. And I just very kind of nonchalantly pulled out my phone and recorded him walking up. And some of you have probably seen that video. Um, I, I never intended to upload it. I talked to him that night and then his wife friended me on Facebook and sent me a message and she said, I said, I'm not gonna put this up, that's too personal. She, she said, Mark's fine with it, trust me. I talked to him, he said he was fine with it. We uploaded it and it's been one of my most watched videos, just this five minute clip of this guy walking to this site and just having this really emotional, really kind of a spiritual experience in this place where this guy was killed. Wow. Um, okay, so here's what I wanna know. We'll stick with you, Chris Mowry. You know, you said that you, none of us, Actually, the trust was try is kind of deliberate about it, uh, you know, in wanting to grow our channel because we get more viewers, we get more members, everything like right. that. But yeah. especially for you two, uh, and let's start with Chris Mowry. Why do you do this? Now, I know the channel started to blow up, but mm -hmm. I, had a, I have a kid who got 180,000 followers on TikTok in three months and then just <laughs> shut it off one day. Yep. You know, you don't have to continue to do this. Why do you do this? I never started it thinking this is going to be a career, this is going to be a big money maker for me, anything like that. I had this love for history. I majored in history in college and then never did anything with it. I went into youth ministry. And so I've always, history has always been there and it's always been a huge part of my life. And so it really was kind of more of an outlet for me to be able to talk to, talk to the air about history and maybe somebody would listen. And what I never expected and probably the most unexpected joy of the whole thing is the community that has built because of it. I've gotten to know all of these people who are as obsessed with these historic events as I am, uh, who are as big a nerds, that's the word we use, right, Gary, is nerds? <laughs> well, it, yeah. it depends. Uh, yeah. I'm sure y'all in the audience know, when you graduate from nerd, what's that? <laughs> Loser. Oh, that, yeah, that's yeah. when you're... I knew there was a hierarchy, yeah. I couldn't remember what it was. And I mean, that's when, you, but, but we mean it in a good way. Chris. There's hundreds of thousands of us out there. Yeah. And, and, that's my favorite part, and that's the unexpected part for me. It was an outlet for me to do history, and that's why I keep doing it. I don't keep doing it for any other reason. 
then I love it. And, and I love connecting with people. And that's why I keep telling people, because people are always afraid to like, somebody today on Instagram said, oh, I saw you filming at the Fifth New Hampshire Monument. I'm just like, why didn't you say hi? Oh, I didn't want to bother you. I'm like, no, bother me. It's fine. I like connecting with other people who love this stuff as much as I do. Good. JD, same thing. Why in the world? I have to talk to somebody. My family won't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're tired of it. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, no, I, I just have a, a passion for, for history. Um, I, I think that, that history is one of the things that um, is a common thread that, that binds a people or binds a, a country together when, when they have this, the, these common roots. Uh, so, so telling those stories, um, I, I think, is, is very important. Um, so I'm, I'm obviously a, a big education guy, and I'm, al I'm also just a, a fan. Um, I, I love watching other YouTube channels. I like watching yeah. y'all's channel. Yep. I see Project Past down here in the audience. You know, there, there's tons of uh, YouTube channels that I love to watch, and I, I love just being a part of it. Cool. Now, you know, let's just say, and this is for Chris White on the end, let's just say you had to work with somebody who doesn't really reveal his plans, who seems to never sleep and always wants to travel, <laughs> who then changes the plan after you think you have one, yeah. and then sort of steals the show when you try to do it. Now, why do you continue to do this? <laughs> well, when your boss walks in your office and says, hey, why don't we live stream from, like, a cement basement that's lined in lead and make sure that it works right, figure it out, and then walks out. It was basically how I was assigned the, the task of being the guy behind the camera. Um, I, I do it, you know, number one, because, you know, it's my job. But n <laughs> number two, it, it's really uh, an outlet uh, as a historian. I think that everything that we're capturing up here, I think this is a vital part of being a historian. I don't get an opportunity to be a historian very often at the trust, ironically, and this is one of my outlets. But when we go out to these battlefields, we go to these historic sites, we're meeting with veterans, not us so much, but uh, Chris and JD, these are really going to be oral histories mm -hmm. that we can look back on at some point. We can see how the battlefields evolve. We can see how our interpretation evolves. So from a historian standpoint, I love that idea. I also hate reading, which is ironic. <laughs> um, because I write books and, and you know things like that, but the um, but I really love watching videos. I'm, I very much love watching videos, and that was another way. I think it's another medium, and we're going to engage a different audience on YouTube than we will on Twitter, than we will on Instagram and others. And I think this is one of a, uh, ways to engage with people. And we were talking before this: a younger audience, sometimes a more diverse audience, and an audience who are sometimes older and cannot access places anymore because you know we have wounded warriors who watch our channels and say, we love where you're going because I can't physically go there. We have older people who say the same thing or people who can't afford to go there. So, you know, we're very fortunate to be able to do this, but that's uh, one of the main reasons I like to do it is bring history alive, bring people to where history happened and, you know, uh, make it exciting. And I don't always love having to chase you with a camera because, <laughs> like, you don't stand still, but it's a lot of fun. Well, why don't we stick on you for a sec, uh, Chris, because, you know, uh, J.D. and Chris Mowry, you know, cover a broader subject matter than we do. We, we branch out a little bit, but first from your perspective, what's the difference between a, a Civil War viewer or a Civil War nerd or loser and a World War II kind of viewer or nerd? Is, is there a difference? Um, I think the World War II ones are the ones I want because I keep pushing us to do more World War II because um, that's, that's really my secret love. Um, but there is definitely a difference. Um, Civil War losers really, really, really like to tell us what they know. Mm. And it's usually like mm -hmm. one minute thing that we left out about their ancestor who nobody's ever heard of and, and a battle that took place between two guys and three horses. And, like, so, I think that's it there. There we go. Can I just point out that 10 years ago, I would have been that guy that did that. I was, I was thinking, we, we have some crossover. We have some of the same viewers. <laughs> JD, why don't you reflect on that? Because you're, you're all over the map, literally and uh, temporally. Yeah, I, I think the, so, so what, what I see personally on, on my channel, uh, World War II viewers, is definitely a more international audience. Mm. So, so I can tell when I start doing a, a World War II series, uh, the, the percentage, um, you know, uh, domestic audience versus, you know, people from Britain, Australia, stuff like that, really starts to shift. Uh, so it has more international appeal. Uh, and then whenever I shift back to Civil War, well, then that American percentage goes back up. 
but with, with that being said, uh, I have been pretty pleasantly surprised at the uh, the interest that the Civil War has internationally. That really surprised me, especially amongst Australian viewers. Yeah, yeah. For, for, and I, I don't know what it is, but um, I have a lot of Australians that are really interested in the Civil War. Huh. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know why. I've never been able to explain to you. There's reenactors in Australia and the UK and mm. y'all here. It's the Gettysburg anniversary. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, they always wear very large hats. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I learned. Whenever they came over here back in 1998, I was a reenactor. I'm like, who are those guys? They were all from Great Britain, and they look like comically large, gone with the wind hats. <laughs> so <laughs> none of them are here. <laughs> Wait, because you wouldn't be able to see in front of you. Yeah. Uh, Chris Mahar? I think there's a difference. I've noticed in the way people connect to World War II history as opposed to Civil War history, because at least for my generation and older, our generation and older, most of us knew people who were World War and II veterans. That's a good point. Uh, and most of us are, have a favorite World War II film or movie and, uh, or TV show. And you know, so I think we know a lot more stories about World War II. The Civil War, people know who Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson and maybe Grant are, and maybe they know about a few of the big battles, but they're not gonna know much about those more interesting stories like a, an Alonzo Cushing at Gettysburg, for example. I think they know a lot more of those kinds of connections with World War II than they do with the Civil War. Cool. So it, let, let's go yes or no from JD to Chris to Chris. We'll just go down the line here. Yes or no. Have you copied, not, not content, but have you copied something the other channels does and made it your own? Yes or no? I didn't tell them I was going to ask this one. <laughs> Is he, is he going first? Yes. 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 And he doesn't want to answer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's nothing new under the sun, but I will say yes. Uh, Gettysburg series relied heavily on the American Battlefield Trust videos. <laughs> it was a great. It was a great resource. Now JD really failed in yes or no. And he really added on to that. Though. So. Uh, Yes, I've copied from both your channels. Okay, Chris? Oh, you know I have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. I wanted to get that out of the way, because unabashedly, I mean, this is, historians are supposed to talk to one another. Mm -hmm. When we argue about things, this is what we're supposed to do. And man, if we're trying to reach more people, let, let's not copy each other's exact content, mm -hmm. but if something's working, I mean, there are things, and yeah, people yeah. get into this real quick. There are things about y'all's channels of which we are absolutely jealous. Um, Chris, so I, what I was going to say was one thing that I and I, I try to communicate this on my channel, and I think people don't realize most of us that have these YouTube channels, we're huge fans of each other's channels, yeah. and we yeah. love yeah. seeing each other grow. Like, there's no there's occasionally a channel that you encounter that they're a jerk and they're really stubborn about stuff, but for the most part, we're fans of each other. And, and I loved that JD just hit half a million subscribers. I, I can't wait till he gets to a million. And we're all on the same side. We're all trying to do the same thing. And, and I think we support each other by and large. Yeah, so I, okay, so there, there was a moment that was a combination of admiration and, and jealousy. Uh, when I saw the videos that you all did with the step into history, where you took the photos of, mm -hmm. you know, at Antietam mm -hmm. and, and everything like that, I was like, my gosh, that is so brilliant. I wish to heavens I would have thought of that first uh, because it was so good and, and so well executed. I, I don't know. I don't want to go like off your no, script. It's I, open. I would, I would love to hear more about that. Have, have you all seen those videos? Awesome. Well, I, by the way, you're about the only ones. <laughs> <laughs> they're really good, but nobody's yeah. seeing them. Oh, so anyway. it's, it's so incredible. And I, I would like to may, maybe hear more, more from you about like the, the genesis of that or, or how that developed. Yeah, good. Moderator JD here. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this was actually not our idea. It was our production partner, Wide Awake Films in Kansas City. They do all, most of our best stuff. Um, they are polishing it or, or making it. And they, about six years ago, you know, found a way to, to walk into a photo by rendering it after you're in it and it wraps around you. And I never forgot the idea and always wanted to muster up the money and the time in the right way to step into Civil War photos. So we did four of them at Antietam mm -hmm. last year. Uh, they, you know, in Antietam series, it's mostly dead people, and I'm not sure if that's why <laughs> you know, people didn't do it. So I kind of dressed up and walked among the graves at Burnside Bridge and near the battery, like Knapp's battery, and at the Dunker Church among the dead, and we, we zoomed over the dead at the Hagerstown Pike. And I mean, uh, the comments were out of this world, oh, but the views so good. were, were yeah. unbelievably low compared to a video. By the way, these are $10,000 each. 
Um, and our members pay for that. These are not inexpensive videos to make. They felt right. It's we, what we should do. And we've shot a lot more. And we'll see if we can afford to actually produce more. That's where the And, and the you make a good point, too, there, that we really just never have any, any clue what's going to do well and what doesn't. Yeah. People think that if you've grown your channel to the size that we have, that you've got it figured out. We have no idea. Yeah, the, some of the stuff you think is going to be great and popular just falls flat, and then stuff you think was meh, kind of mediocre, does great. Yeah, Chris, do you have that experience too? It's oh, you know we do. <laughs> <laughs> I went we'll sit around. I mean, we have more ideas than you can imagine. I mean, most of them come from that end of the table, but you know, it, it's constant trying to come up with we think things will be cool and then it's like oof, falls flat and then other things it's like they really like that you know we just threw that together and you know it's, it's like throwing spaghetti at the wall i call yep. it well here, yeah. here's my experience is there have been a lot of times i'll post a video and it'll just like dormant for maybe a year or two yeah. and then and then for whatever reason something grabs hold uh, in, in the YouTube yep. algorithm, and, and it'll just take off. We, we had that recently with a, a few videos, um, mm -hmm. but it's also what's in the news, too, sometimes helps. Yeah. You know, if a 160 Gettysburg's gonna help drive our Gettysburg content and things like that. But yeah, that's a huge, you know, like our older videos, we have some videos that weren't performing for like six years, and then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, get 100,000 views. Yeah, it, there was one video we had up there for four years, and it was our most popular video. And for us, that's four million views, unlike any other video we'd had. And then all of a sudden, over a six-week period, we got 35 million more views. You know, over six weeks, because it was virtual reality video, which cost a lot more than the step-in videos. And, um, and then YouTube decided to prioritize VR, and they recommended it for six weeks. And we got, you know, uh, just about a million views a day, which was just wow. unbelievable. Um, you know, and uh, it, it, so we, there, there's no way, there is no recipe for success. Is, is that right? I, I, I would agree with that, 100%. Good. I think they're a little bit um, yeah. quality content, yeah. consistent content, and making sure that you have uh, things that people like. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. there are some channels that legitimately all they do is yell at each other on them, and people love it. <laughs> you know, and there's others who are uh, like completely positive. Like, you know, we try to keep our channel. Um, you know, so there's it, there are things that you could do there. Yeah. I think there are mile markers that you can hit. But you never know what's going to eventually take you down that road where you're going to be, you know, 500,000 views, million views or whatever it is. I think it's less about video to video, knowing what's going to happen. But there are, like he said, there are certain overall things about your presentation style and that's going to draw certain people. And so I think there are some overarching things that definitely do matter. Yeah, good. You good? Yeah, I'm good. All right, yeah. Uh, so we, we started out as a love fest, and we're starting to get down a little bit, take a trip, as they say in the Wedding Crashers, to Negative Town. We're not going to go negative, but I am going to ask a question that might take us there. Oh, well, um, Gary, I'll put it neutral, put a little bit of syrup in my head. Yeah, yeah, there we go. We, this is what we, we do in the car. Yeah, right? we quote movies all the yeah. time. For the four people here who have seen Wedding Crashers, yeah. we'll be able to quote it while you're there. So you know, I, I want to talk about why shouldn't somebody in the audience, somebody mm. watching online, why shouldn't somebody do this? Because it, it does change things. We'll, we'll, we'll start mm. with Chris Mowry here. Um, and then we'll actually we could have a free for all. Yeah. Somebody else wants yeah. to go first. You know, why, what are some of the reasons why somebody shouldn't? It, if you don't have a thick skin, that's a huge one. I mean, you have to be ready for, you can do everything right. You can think you're be doing everything right and being positive. There will be critics, no matter what you do. When you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of people, especially, there's always going to be a few. I found out today that somebody was impersonating me on Discord and had to deal with that. <laughs> so there's that stuff. There's going to be other channels that make negative videos about you. We just dealt with that. I mean, so the more popular, there are benefits to that, but you have to be ready for the negative, and you just have to, you have to accept that that's part of it, I think. Real quick, yes, I you have negative viewers? <laughs> Probably some of the same ones you get. No, I, no, I've never had any. <laughs> I, I didn't know that there were negative people out there. <laughs> just real quick, I want to note that a thousand people just asked what Discord is online here. On the stream. <laughs> it, it's something those kids use. Yeah. Um, Chris or JD? I yeah, I I would really echo that. I, I had a a very nice lady reach out to me one time and uh, was inspired by the, the work that I was doing on the channel and um, said that she would like to start her own YouTube channel, which I was like, yeah, all for it. You know, I'm, the, the more people that are, you know, getting history out there, the more I can learn. You know, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm a fan. Uh, she said, I'm wanting to start my own YouTube channel, but I see the negative comments that you get and I don't think that I could handle that very well. And I said, don't start a YouTube channel <laughs> so, because I, yeah, like you said, you, you have to have, uh, 
a lot of grace. Uh, you have to have exceptionally thick skin. Uh, my, my thing is uh, the, the way that I go into it, um, I try and be lighthearted uh, about everything um, and not, not get too serious. Uh, and I, I've, I've made it a point uh, in my life that I'm never going to let a stranger on the internet ruin my day. Uh, so I, yeah, I, I get a, I get a lot of that, but um, yeah, there there are some. Some days it's easier to do that than others, That's but true. you have to you have That's to try true. and ignore it somehow. Yeah. yeah, Chris. If you never want to pay for a drink again in Gettysburg, be the camera guy for Gary Adelman. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, that. That's not why to not do anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, the alcohol helps. Um, when. <laughs> When we, um, you know, not to do it, you know, I'll go to the, the number one, the time commitment. So mm -hmm. if, you're, if you have a young family, if you have time commitment, if you're going to do this, you have to stick with it. Because um, you can't just put up one video every, you know, six weeks or two months or whatever it's going to be. Um, you have to stick with it. And mm -hmm. editing takes time. Uh, now, granted, we do a lot of editing literally in the field on my phone. A lot of that is done we're doing it live, but other times we're sitting back spending four hours, five hours, six hours, taking drone footage, going to Pond5, downloading things, uh, buying new content. So, and then exporting a video, if you don't have the right computer, it can take eight to 12 hours to just <laughs> export something. Then you gotta upload it. Then you have to upload it. So, you know, it's, it really is a time commitment. So, you know, the negative, yeah, you definitely have to get a thick skin. Um, I worked in a National Park Service Visitor Center that was Checked off my box early. <laughs> I went to Walmart, same thing. There you go. You, you were worse. I was at Sam's Club in high school. In so. the photo lab. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I worked for a trash company. And, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I, I think that's a big thing to think about. And then, you know, the more you want to, the, the better you want to do, this does cost money. Uh, yeah. So if you have to put your uh, hard earned dollars behind buying the right equipment, and believe me, it was trial and error sometimes mm. when it comes to equipment. What's going to talk to what and what's going to do this and that. Gary legit came into my office, assigned it to me. I have a history background. I used to be a financial consultant. I learned all of this through YouTube and other places <laughs> yep. like that on, on how to do it. And then people come to me now asking me, um, you know, hey, how did you do this and how do you do that? And I tell them and then they don't invite us onto their channel and use that same <laughs> stuff. Not that that's but a pet peeve. As far as the tech, though, let me stick with you, Chris White. Yeah. Uh, as far as the tech, which you said you didn't know, tell them your mantra, because this really helps to get it about winning versus losing. Oh, I have a big sign. I have, I have motivational signs on my door. Um, and I also have funny signs on my door. But I have a sign that says, I hate, I, I hate losing more than I like winning. And he mm -hmm. knows when I get into game mode, I'm going to be the best of the best, and I'm going to find the best thing. And every Gettysburg 160, I come up with a new gimmick, a new toy, a new something. And that's what you have to do as well. You can't just succeed and then, you know, all right, let rest on my laurels. Mm -hmm. You have to keep innovating, and you have to keep buying new yeah. tech and, and, and taking risks. It's calculated risks. I only have one sign in my office, and it says, hey, you, get to work. <laughs> <laughs> it was a gift from my wife. <laughs> I'll add that I, I have a bunch in my office, but they're all hidden kind of in my bookshelves because they would make people throw up. They're like just so positive, like everything is great. Like I, they're, they're on the back of my bookcase. But I want to second everything you guys said. I want to attribute it to Shelby Foote or something like, ain't nobody everybody's cup of tea. And that's exactly how I would say it. There is no pleasing, no matter how good you are. And there could be 99.8% of the comments could all be great. Yeah. And then there are people out there. So I agree with the thick skin because they're... they're so here's a, here's a pro tip for you. If you get the one that goes on and gives like a four paragraph response <laughs> ranting about everything, the best thing you can do, and this has become my standard response to those, Sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> I'll, I'll add that you can't do this on YouTube, but I do it on Facebook, sorry for anybody on my page, is the like hide feature. I'll like their comment and then hide it so they can't infect other people <laughs> on my page. And I smile every time I do it, because it's my page, uh, you know. Um, so I, I do want to add one more thing about the dark side of this, because I, I do think that the, the whatever we want to call the minor fame, I don't know if that's what you guys call it, but if you get recognized as an airport, at an airport or in other countries, I think you've got some level of that. It happens to me here and on battlefields. And, and it gets in our way sometimes, mm -hmm. to be sure. I'm sure that happens to all of us. You're trying to work and people just want to and, and you, you accommodate and I'll take selfies and, and do things with whoever wants to. But there's one troubling part about it. 
is that not only do people not tell me who they are, okay, but then when I ask their names, I frequently, maybe one in 10 people say, oh, I'm nobody. What the hell is that, okay? <laughs> I, you know, these are, we're, we're regular people who just happen to make videos that people watch. Mm -hmm. You know, I can only imagine how people in Hollywood feel because they dress up and play, like, or something like that. But the idea that because a lot of people see your video renders them unimportant is very troubling. Yeah. And to me, that's, that's almost enough to keep some people out of this business too, is, is that side of it. Yeah. You know, do you, have you guys had an experience with that this fame thing? Yeah, I, 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 two things with that. One is, and I learned this lesson when we were all together, actually, uh, at Antietam. I used to, I was still operating on the mindset that not a lot of people were going to respond when I did something like, hey, I'm going to be at the Antietam battlefield for these four days. If you see me, come say hi. Yeah, we learned that the hard way. Yeah, we don't tell anybody. <laughs> I, and I had good intentions. I just didn't know that it meant that I wouldn't be able to go 10 minutes without making a video because every 10 minutes somebody was walking up saying hi, which is great. And, and, I, and I don't want to be a jerk, so I want to say hi, but then it means I can't get work done. So I've, I've had to learn to kind of create some boundaries by not announcing where I'm going to be until the end of my trip so all the videos are done because I want to spend that time with people and I, and I want to be a comedy. And I don't want to come across as leave me alone, I'm trying to work but you also have to get the work done. So it's a balancing act. Yeah, it is. Um, all right, we're gonna go down the line again. We're gonna start with Chris and go Chris, then JD here. Um, straight up, one word answer. Gettysburg or Gettysburg? Gettysburg. 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 Yeah. Sorry, Gettysburg. But Chris is right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I get eviscerated for it. Yeah. I know he's that. right, but I still say that. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> it, the, the founder's name, you can learn it downstairs here, you know, beyond the battle. This, the founder's name is James Geddes. We all know this, okay? And yet, I like the way Gettysburg sounds. Ask JD <laughs> where the shot heard around the world was fired. Okay, let's hear it. Where was the shot heard around the world? Everyone knows that it was fired at Concord. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Not we're Concord. Get, Concord. We're going to get big trouble here. What is right. this? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look what finger he's is using, this, too. Uh, is, is this a cord or a curd? <laughs> I see some cottage cheese on it there. Okay. So I, yeah. I will accept the apology of everyone in Boston. <laughs> it eviscerated me about my pronunciation of Concord. Well, uh, Chris White gets killed for this. Like, people actually get mad about it. Yes. Okay. Uh, away from the trite here. Let's get on to something meaningful that, that the, the trust board of directors would really like to know. And the trust development team would really like to know. What all this work, right? We've changed, you know, what does it do for the country? What does it get us? Like, you know, all of our collective work and the other channels that we all follow, what good does it do? Uh, let's start with you, JD. So I, I mentioned earlier that, that one, one thing that, that makes a, a country uh, or a nation is, is a shared history. So, so I think that you, you can't have that shared history if you don't know about it. And, and YouTube, uh, in, in my opinion, makes that more accessible than at any other point in human history. I guess we could broaden that out and say the internet. Um, so, so I, I think that that, that has the, the main value, um, you know, for yeah, what we do. So I've got three kids that are um, almost 11, 15, and my daughter will be 18 on Monday, and they don't watch TV. They only watch YouTube. I mean, that is exclusively what they watch. If the History Channel spends millions of dollars and makes an actual history documentary. Um, they're not going to see it, but they will see a video that I make on YouTube from me going to Verdun, you know, stuff like that. And they will not have otherwise heard of Verdun. My wife is not into history, but she'll watch my videos about it. So it's, it's I think, appealing to an audience that we otherwise are going to lose. Uh, so we're making these videos. There's a challenge there, too, because anybody can make them. And anybody can say whatever they want. And sometimes it's really bad history. And so we have to be really careful that what we're talking about is true. We don't have to be experts, but we at least need to be telling the truth and, and speaking the actual history. Isn't that the same with books, though? Yeah. I, I mean, anybody can true. write a book. True. I've read plenty of bad books with bad yeah. history. Um, but it's harder so, to get those published. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, published, so. That's a, that's a yeah. decent point. Yeah. Um, but I, I think there's a, there's a checks and balances thing as well, you know, if there's if there's bad history, yeah, there's there's going to be a following there, but but there's also going to be you know the the good historians that mm -hmm. that are going to to check that. 
Chris Mowry, your daughter's birthday is Monday. Are you going to be home in time? We're going to be home. We're, we're going to be here for Stephen Lang on Monday morning, and then we're heading home after that. <laughs> All right. You got your priorities straight. Yes, yeah. right? Yeah, I would say that, uh, to paraphrase David McCullough, nobody did any harm to history by making it interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, that making history more accessible uh, to folks, be it through libraries, through YouTube, through anything else, that's going to bring more people, draw more people in. Uh, for the trust specifically, that's going to help us to get our messaging out there, especially for pres preserving battlefields, you know, getting more members, things like that, but also to inspire the next generation, as we say, and it's also educating the, the general public. So making it more accessible, I mean, it hasn't done anything to, to hurt folks. And we actually came up with an idea called Battlefield U. In uh, 90 seconds or less, we came up with the idea that we are going to uh, answer simple questions like what is a casualty? You know, a lot of people think it's just everyone who's killed. So we put that there and so many people just go to Google and one of the first things that will pop up is a YouTube clip mm -hmm. or, or YouTube video. And that's what we started to, to try to do because people go to Google. People are interested. It's not just older people who are interested in history. Um, it's younger people, but they don't always see them at places like this because they have families, they have jobs, they have other things to do. But we see them behind the computer because we can all access our numbers and we can all access our demographics and we can see who's watching, when they're watching, how long they're watching. And of course, they're very positive feedback for all of us. Uh, one, one thing that I've, that I've said <laughs> in the past is uh, nobody hates history. They, they hate how they were taught. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I can talk to somebody and, you know, they find out that I'm in the history or have a YouTube channel or have a background in education or, or whatever. And, you know, they'll say, oh, man, I, I hated history when I was in high school. And, and within a, a few questions, uh, you know, you find out well, they just don't really like how it was presented mm -hmm. to them uh, or how, how it was taught. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think that, you know, I, you know, all three of us have very three. There, there's a common thread with history, but there's also three different channels and, and three different flavors, and, and that appeals to a, a broad range of people. Cool, good guys. Let's, because uh, we want to make sure we allow time for the scariest part of the presentation, questions from the audience. <laughs> oh my God, we're going to try to look at you and pick who's going to ask us questions we're going to like, so that'll be fun. Only, um, only people that are wearing our merch. That's yeah, 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 you have to have trust, uh, History Underground, or Vlogging Through History Merchandise. No, just kidding. Uh, you have to have a Beyond the Battle little sticker on your shirt. How about that? Um, you know, uh, uh, but real quick, uh, what's coming? Uh, any of you can go first, but what's coming up on your channels that you might want people to know about that you're allowed to talk about? Anyone? <laughs> uh, so one of the <laughs> one, one of the big gaps that I have on my channel, um, it, it's very heavy Civil War, very heavy World War II, and then a spattering of things here and there. Uh, but one of the big gaps is World War One, and I'm I'm in a World War One phase. People ask me all the time, you know, what's your favorite? part of history, and it's, it's whatever I happen to be studying at the time. Right now, it's World War I, uh, so I'm, I'm about to, um, yeah, fill, fill a, a pretty big gap on my channel with that. Please, Gary, just let me go over there. Please. Yes. <laughs> and, and to make Chris feel even worse about it, my next upcoming series is, uh, I'm going back to the Somme. Um, I did a six-part series from the Somme last year. It was my first trip to France, and it was life-changing for me. I mean, I had done research for months about that trip, and when I stood in the spot where the Accrington Pals lost 80% casualties in 100 yards in like 30 minutes, um, I had done that research months before, and I was reading the casualty figures as I stood where it happened, and it just hit me in that moment. The history really did come alive for me, and, and I've been... World War One has been an obsession for me ever since. But so I went back and just did another six part series from the Somme. And um, I want to go to Chickamauga at some point. So hopefully this fall. And then I'm, I'm actually got a tour group. Um, and, and I know there, I ran into somebody today uh, here at Gettysburg that's going to be on our tour. Uh, we're going to uh, Germany and Austria in October. So not bad. Chris White, is there anything I don't know about? <laughs> uh, let me think. Well, I'm going to the Somme and then I'm going to the Pole. Oh, okay. Good. Um, <laughs> So we're, we're working on some things in the green room. Um, <laughs> right, right now, we have uh, more of these step-ins that JD uh, had uh, talked about here with Gary. And they are a, a historic image where you we physically step into those, those images. One of the ones that we filmed recently was the uh, Sunken Road Dead at Fredericksburg. Mm -hmm. Um, we did uh, the, a meeting between Meade and Grant at Massaponix Church. Hopefully those will come out within the next few months. Um, we have, do you want me to tell about the big one? Yes, uh, sure. yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't even know what you're in. Yeah. Our, 
we're, we're working on a, oh, yes. what we call an All Wars animated map. It's in oh, the yeah. very last stages of uh, production where we're going through pronunciations of the World War One and World War II battlefields because we're going to go from 1754 to 1945. Mm. There'll be an animated map and encouraging um, folks to learn more about those wars, which is ironic since I'm the only one who pronounced Gettysburg right. They came to me for the pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so that's going to be cool. If you've ever seen our animated maps, they're basically mini documentaries mm -hmm. that um, fast moving, give you enough information to be dangerous and then learn more about that subject. And of course, we have virtual field trips we've been working on, which um, are really awesome. Uh, we work with a, a video company called Acalse. That's their real name. They're out of Minnesota, and we have some really cool behind-the-scenes things at the World War II Museum that we're working on down in New Orleans, and some other places we'll release, like the Hunley. Um, and then I think finally we have a few more driving tours. Gary did a driving tour here last year. Well, actually, we shot it during COVID. Came out last year um, uh, of his two and a half hour tour here around the Gettysburg battlefield. So it's like having a licensed battlefield guide in your car with you. Mm. We released one with Tim Smith of the West at Shiloh. Um, we have Yorktown coming out. We have Chickamauga coming out and, and some others. And that's a really cool shoot. And that was really cool to pull together because it was a multi-camera shoot in different states and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and Chris from Vlogging Through History is going to react to all of our videos <laughs> afterward, thereby you know, getting even more trips to Verdun and the song. Exactly. <laughs> can, I throw, yeah. can I throw in one more plug? Yeah, sure. So, so we're at the Adams County Historical Society right now. Uh, they also have a YouTube channel mm. that is, is outstanding rocket, that, yeah. that I would highly recommend. Um, you know, it, it, Andrew's when, back there smiling like yeah, a, no, little, <laughs> a little heart thing, like a little beating heart thing. It, it, it's seriously good. I mean, all of us, when we went to school, like what you learn about, I'll just pick the Civil War, um, most of us probably learned, you know, about Fort Sumter, uh, Bull Run, Manassas, Gettysburg, Vicksburg, and then Appomattox. That's, that's what you learn. If that much. If, if yeah. that much. Um, and, and channels, like there's all these different history channels on YouTube, uh, I think fulfill an important role in filling in the gaps mm -hmm. and, and helping us to, to broaden our knowledge. So anyway, we're, we're here at this amazing facility and I, I wanna make sure that we plug their channel as well because it's, it's really, really good. Excellent, thank you. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna add one more thing onto what Chris White said as a lead into my next, and it's a very selfish question as well. Uh, but one other thing we've been working on since last June is meeting with actors and people involved with the Gettysburg movie to celebrate its 30th anniversary that's coming this October. It was shot 30 years ago last summer, and we've been meeting with them on location to talk about what it was like to shoot this movie. We already released one video, um, mm -hmm. and then there will be, I don't know, 10, 15, 20. Chris is trying to cap it at 20, but you know, we've shot a lot of stuff. I, I think we honestly have like 60 hours of footage at this nice. point. Yeah, we do have 60 hours of We need all 60 uh, hours yeah, of yeah, footage. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, believe me, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Some of that, we have one guy who just tells the same story six times. So, like, yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah, you know who you are. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we have a video coming up before long about your favorite lines where we have various people doing those lines, sometimes the actors, sometimes oh, nice. not. Uh, nice. We're going to have things like at the barn where Hood was wounded and the scene of Pickett's charge and the shooting at the, the video shooting or the film shooting at Devil's Den, something about the drone, something about the first day shot and all of the uh, multi-purpose places where 10 different things were shot in one place and you would never know it. So we're gonna get into all that, but the next video that will launch is on Monday. And here's where the selfish part comes in because that is about the movie Gettysburg's Beards, often called Getty's Beard. Okay, and it's going to be a fun little short video where we got it. And in honor of that, some of you know that I'm going to, based on the will of the social media crowd, shave this mess into whatever y'all choose on tomorrow night. Okay, so right now, Strong Vincent and, uh, oh, yeah. uh, and, and Abe Lincoln and Patty O'Rourke. Patty O'Rourke sort of has a Burnside thing going on here. Vincent has the big mutton chops and Lincoln has everything but the mustache. Like basically going on and on. I'll do it tomorrow night. But my question for you guys is: If, if you have you tried historic facial hair, and and, or, and if you could grow any one, <laughs> what, what, what was it? Because this is important for the future of YouTube in Normandy and Gettysburg. I like to point out. <laughs> Gary came up with this idea on his own. We didn't talk him into this. this no, is, no. This is a Gary Adelman. You know story. I can't grow a beard, Gary. <laughs> is that why? Do you, see, do you see what I'm trying to so do? So yeah, that's the question. If you could, would you rock a Burnside? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> JD, you're close. Oh, oh man, yeah. I, I think I think that Grant just has a good classic beard. 
Um, yeah, but I, I get it. The, the burden of manliness is pretty heavy for some of us. Uh, <laughs> Chris, you're, <laughs> Chris White, you're kind of rocking a John Gibbon over there, if I'm correct. Yeah, if I if I wouldn't get divorced, I'd totally go for like a Bismarck or something Ooh, like that. Nice. Like, yeah, and yeah. definitely go for like a Kaiser Wilhelm with the whole. Those oh man, guys. I would recommend <laughs> sticking only to those German leaders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Hold on, can I drop the mic? Yeah, that's a good one. Hey guys, before we take some questions, uh, anything else you want to add uh, that maybe I didn't tell yeah, you? Yeah, the only thing I would say is one of the driving forces for me behind wanting to make videos where I went to these historic sites is I learned really on, and I'm sure many of you, because you're all here at Gettysburg, learned is that your perception of historic events changes completely when you go there. And you can write them off on your tax. Ah, there you that too. The first time I went to Dealey Plaza and I saw the distance between the book depository and, and the ground, I was like, that's it? I, I, it was so much bigger in my mind, you know? And the first time I went to Shiloh and saw that the entire time the Confederates were attacking uphill, it would just change my perspective of that battle. And, and you read about Burnside Bridge and you think, how could a small band of Confederates hold it? And then you go there and you're like, oh, that's how they did it. You know, it changes everything. So that's one of the reasons why I do it. Good, good. Um, anything else, guys? All right, here we go. I'm standing up talk show style. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for you? You raise oh, it boy. first. This is terrific. I really enjoyed this. Are you guys ever home? How many days on the road out of the year are you guys? This is incredible. So first of all, he did it with a nice, loud voice. If you need the mic, I'll come to you or do my best. If you can't, if, if you're able, though, nice and loud so everybody can hear. Are we ever home, guys? Um, yes, I, I am home sometimes. Um, the. The, the channel is a little bit deceptive mm. in how it, it makes it look like I'm just gone and traveling all the time. Uh, in, in reality, um, I'll be gone maybe a week at a time. And, and in that week, I'm filming, you know, if I'm by myself, uh, I'm, I'm filming daylight to dark. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm gathering up months worth of content just in, in that one week. Uh, so, so the channel makes it look like I'm, I'm just gone all the time. Uh, in, in reality, it's it's a it's a week here, it's three days, you know, like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday here. Um, yeah. As far as how many days I'm gone, um, I, I don't know. Seventy-one. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I probably do eight trips a year, and each one's a couple of days to a week at most. So yeah, I'm not gone that much either. When I took the job, it said travel zero to ten percent of your job. Uh, that was a lie. Uh, I, we, I, I agree with JD. We do the same thing. When we hit the ground, people don't understand. We come in, we'll shoot six to eight videos in a day, mm -hmm. and we'll come into a museum. They're like, "All right, we have the next four hours. We have thirty minutes," and that's what Gary will tell them. And it's like you can just see them sinking. Um, but we can we can shoot a lot, um, and, and we are outsized because we release things staggered. Mm -hmm. um, but we're on the road at least, I would say, six weeks a year. I would say combined with everything that we do, between events, too. We also try to shoot while we're at our annual conference, Teacher Institute, and stuff like that. Yeah. I, six weeks, that's probably about what I'm going to. Right. Yeah. 71, 41. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. How about over here? Uh, you, sir. So because I discovered your channel, Chris, through him and by extension you, J.D., do any of you have any plans to do a collaboration with Autumn Shea Films? Oh, so, we got some Autumn Shea Films here. Yeah, so the question was if we plan to do any collaborations with Autumn Shea. Um, yeah. Any collaborations planned, anything? I, I haven't talked to him, but but I would. Yeah, I, when I first did my first reaction to him, I would have said no. Aww, but, it. yeah, the Gods and Generals one, yeah. Uh, it, it's called Gods and Jackson. <laughs> Gods and Jackson. <laughs> accurate, <laughs> accurate. Um, but no, I, I definitely would, yeah. Yeah, I, I would. I would. I, I don't know him personally, um, but I'm, I'm familiar with his work. But yeah, absolutely. So what do you think, Chris? You, we, we have some reputational risk going on with our organization on who we involve ourselves with, so you guys should be happy you made the cut. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we have to be a lot careful. We have members to answer to. Uh, you know, we're a fundraising organization. Mm. What do you think about that, Chris? Yeah, I will, well, I'll speak with our Lord and Savior, James Campy Jr., who's our <laughs> policy and uh, communications director. Yeah. So. yeah, exactly. All right, what else we got? Okay. Oh, Front row, Tim York. <laughs> For you two. Yeah. Uh, have you ever uh, caught a phone call after it was broadcast? And if so, what was the worst one? Oh, man. Well, you did. You uh, dropped some Civil War sexual innuendos on one of our videos last year. I don't think this is a family channel that we're, uh, we're streaming on. I don't think we should repeat it. So is ours. 
we'll leave that one there. Yeah, there, there, there are times time, you know, from time to time, my brain doesn't communicate with my mouth well, and I'll, I'll be thinking one thing and I'll say another. Mm -hmm. uh, and usually, you know, hopefully I, I catch that when I'm editing, but sometimes you, you see some things so many times when you're editing stuff that you, your your mind almost gets numb to it. Yeah. Uh, probably the one that that bothered me the most uh, was I came here to Gettysburg, filmed all this content, and was was all excited, you know, to, to launch this huge series. The very first video um, was out at uh, Seminary Ridge Museum, and um, I said that um, Sam Elliott. I, in my mind, I thought Buford, and I said Reynolds, and and people. So this is the very first video, and and people just ripped me to shreds, justifiably. Uh, yeah, I do that all the time because I do a lot of reaction videos, and I don't. To, contrary to what some people think, I don't watch those ahead of time, so I have no idea what's coming, and so most of what I'm saying, I'm just doing off the cuff, and so occasionally I'll remember a fact wrong or you know stuff like that. But there was one I did. I was in Verdun in France. Sorry, Chris. Um, <laughs> and uh, I did this great video, and I was really excited about it. It was about this guy named Colonel Driant, who was this French soldier uh, who commanded this group of light infantry, and I kept kept referring to his unit as chasseurs, which is the French word for shoe. And what I meant was chasseurs, which is the French word for light infantry. And I did it every single time in that video. So I never put the video up, even though I loved that video because I just couldn't get over the fact that people were gonna just not what's, be able to get past me saying that. What's the correct pronunciation? It's chasseur. Not, chasseur. It, there's a difference between, there's a U in the, in the word for shoe. And that was what I kept saying. We've never okay. done it before, but Chris White would suggest that it could be like, and here we are, we're gonna talk about the chasseurs. And the like, <laughs> audio doesn't match at all. Wait, did you consider doing that? We have never done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you good? Uh, yeah, all, all I'll say is, uh, just to tip in, try working without a net for 45 minutes, reciting historical information off the top of your head yeah. while you're trying to do a video with people watching you, and, I mean, it's, there's pressure, it's not like real pressure, but there's pressure to perform there, and mm -hmm. it's, you know, things start up here and they come out of your mouth like blutton whenever you're yeah. standing at Grant's tomb and telling them to push that subscribe button. <laughs> Harry likes to remind me of that yeah, one. Well, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, not only pick in your scene if you're going to get into this business, but also be prepared to make mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you 100%. Know, we, we, spit out, we probably spit out 20,000 words each today on our three or you four You just getting videos. about the last three yeah. sentences. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to get stuff wrong. And, yep. and that's another 100%. important thing. Uh, I'm going to go to the pre-raised hand. I think that's Ciola, Cibola over there or whatever. You, you sort of... There's a good lead in on my question. First of all, you guys are great. We've been following you for a couple years. Thank you. Thank you. All these guys are great. Great role models. Wonderful people. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gary just mentioned live videos, and I was curious what your thoughts are about doing live versus the pre recorded I don't think there's a lot more frustration or yeah. tension or, I don't know. I, I love the live stuff because it's live interacting with people. Um, and I did like some of my most popular live streams. I'm really into the British royal family and stuff like that. So I live streamed the Queen's funeral, and was just was chatting with people and saying, "Here's why they're doing this," and, or with the the coronation, just talked about the symbolism behind stuff. And and people were asking questions in real time. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. You were in a studio, right? I was at my home. Yeah, I was yeah. at home. Yeah, it's okay. a little different outside. Yeah. So let, let me tell you, when your boss wants you to go to Devil's Den with a hot spot in an iPhone and try to stream live. It's mm. going to give you an ulcer. If I had a shot for every time he used the word connectivity the first time we did that, I would have been hammered by the time we went live. <laughs> because uh, all I heard is, how's the connectivity? How's the connectivity? So uh, live, there are benefits for sure. And there's great interaction right then and there with, with your audience. I really mm. like that. Um, producing the videos legitimately right on my phone. Mm. And I mean, Gary has and seen he's me. looking at comments. And 
banning people and doing this <laughs> and while well, yeah. shooting with the rights of them. Maybe we should get some more staff. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, when we're live, we're actually, I'm using a, an app called Switcher, and as we're going through, if you watched any of our videos over the last few days, those animated maps, all of the uh, drone footage we're using and everything, I mean, that's all preloaded into my phone where I'm scrolling as fast as humanly possible as Doug Dowds is standing on a little round top saying, <laughs> and George Sykes and Governor K. Warren and this, and I'm trying to find the rest of the people and do that. So in a way, it's rewarding, uh, but it is it can be trying, especially when you talk about connectivity. People today are like, why don't you improve the connectivity? Why don't you be here on a battlefield where there's you know a ton of people right now and the, the bandwidth is actually being drained in this area because a lot of people are legitimately watching all of our videos out on the field. I heard Gary's voice coming from a car today. <laughs> <laughs> from another car it was it was uh, oh, but, amazing but have you had this happen have you had somebody <laughs> upload a video of a car getting into a car accident while jd's voice is on the radio <laughs> Excellent. Saw that one. yeah but, but yeah, I, I appeared on a car wreck video. <laughs> Somebody was watching my channel while they were driving. Yeah. Was that you? That was you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. I am so glad that you sent that to me. That was the wildest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> But, but also, live video is fun. The other day, Steve Zahn, an actor, showed up, uh, spoiler alert, on one of our videos. Um, he comes just running in. He looks like a homeless guy right now because he has this beard, and he goes, I look homeless because I'm playing a homeless guy. So, you know, and he was, and yeah. Gary's like looking at this guy, and I, I could see him. I was on camera like, ah, that's Steve coming over here. And if you don't know Steve, he is a fantastic actor. He's been in The White Lotus for her season recently, that thing you do, all kinds of different things. But, yeah, I think it, yeah. I, it's rewarding, but it's also very difficult to go live. It is. Um, so let me see. I'm going to look for somebody in a white top and a floral skirt. You, man, right there. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thanks. And uh, my experience with watching all of you has been, it has allowed me to connect with my ancestors. And you go to places uh, where my ancestors have been. I understand Normandy because of where you have been to Utah Beach and Omaha Beach and uh, I understand uh, about the USS Cairo, and um, I'd like to see more of the Western Flotilla, just putting that in there. But you have helped me connect to my ancestors, and I was wondering, have you connected with your ancestors with places you've gone? Just real quick, I, have you, I, I was supposed to be repeating the questions, it appears. I was supposed to check your text while you're here. <laughs> uh, uh, no, no. And, you know, so have you been able to connect with some of your ancestors through this work? Chris is about to absorb the next hour. There's there's a drinking game for vlogging through history, and one of them is every time I mention my ancestors. <laughs> uh, on our channel, it's every time I mention Pittsburgh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, for, for me, I'll, I'll keep it short. For me. I've been a professional genealogist for going on 30 years. It's, it's my passion in history, especially. For me, in particular, it's, that's what I love about history. Today, I stood at the Peach Orchard. The 57th Pennsylvania was at the apex of Sickles Line. I had a great uncle who was in that unit. His father was in the 4th Pennsylvania Cavalry on, Cemet on Cemetery Ridge. And from, from the 57th Pennsylvania Monument, I could turn around and see the 4th PA Cavalry Monument from where we were standing. And it, I've always wondered, could he see his son's unit getting decimated in the Peach Orchard while that was happening? Those are the kinds of things that I think about when I go to battlefields because I connected with my ancestors. My third great grandfather was a 17-year-old private in the 56th Pennsylvania. They fired the first shots of Union infantry in this battle. So you know, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, for, for me, um, I went to Andersonville. I had an ancestor who was at Andersonville and, and talked about the, the experience there. Uh, another one that I can think of off the top of my head is uh, my great-great-grandpa was in the 27th Illinois uh, Regiment. Mm -hmm. And I did a video at Kennesaw Mountain. So right there at the, the dead angle, you know, did a video there, talked about it, things like that. And, um, and then later, I, I didn't know it at the time, but found out that he was there. Uh, and, and it turns out he stormed the Confederate lines at Kennesaw Mountain. Um, it was about 30 yards to the left of where I was standing uh, there, there at the dead angle. So, so that, was, that was kind of a neat connection there. Yeah. 
and then got to take my daughter back there later on and say, hey, this is where your, your great, great, great grandfather fought. Yeah. Yeah, and, and here, uh, last year I made a video, uh, Gary let me make one of my ancestor who was mortally wounded at Stony Hill. Mm. Um, I'll talk about one in an upcoming video who was here in 1917 at the World War I training camp. He was a cotton baler with the 7th U.S. Infantry. Uh, so I started here um, at Gettysburg where he trained, and then last year my wife and I were where he was wounded on the Marne. Um, he was part of the Rock of the Marne Division whenever they earned their nom de guerre. Um, it, she has ancestors who fought here, some who claimed they fought here and did not. Um, <laughs> we, we found those ones out. So, yeah, we were able to really uh, connect that way. And I know it, it meant a lot to my family that we did a lot of genealogy, especially during COVID. And then being able to talk about it on video has been awesome. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Anyone in the back? Oh, way in the back. I was, I was just curious to ask, so which are your favorite parts of the battlefield? All right, which are your favorite parts of the Gettysburg, <laughs> wheat, wheat field for me. Yeah. There, there's a spot, I was there today, uh, where you can stand and the wheat field's to your right and little round tops to your left. That's my favorite spot on the battlefield because you can see so much of what happened right there. Or what losers call that area, the Pennsylvania Reserves Monument. That's the one, that's the one. <laughs> And here at Gettysburg, um, it's the week. <laughs> and I'm going with that area between Galveston and Little Round Top, where my ashes will. I'll just stop there. <laughs> First of all, thank you guys for all that you do. It's really helpful. And, but thank you. Maybe if my heart broke for what recently happened to you. Yeah. Have you found anything? Are you recuperating? Are you building back up? Yeah, I'm. Uh, oh. Uh, JD, uh, are you recuperating from your loss uh, when you were in Athens of your equipment and your content? Yeah, so uh, just, just the, the context there, um, had uh, literally all of my gear, all my computer equipment, everything stolen from me in Athens. Um, yeah, we went, went to our Airbnb, uh, had my family with me, locked up the vehicle, went to check and make sure we were in the right spot, uh, went inside, checked it out, came back out, weren't gone more than 15 minutes and somebody had um, knocked out the window and yeah, stole all my stuff. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm in the process of recouping all my gear. Um, the Athens police were um, not exactly helpful in, you know, or, or That's eager. an understatement. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I had a, a little, you know, like find my um, iPad or find my computer and everything like that. And where it popped up, long story short, was in the most dangerous part of the city. And uh, a couple of the local guys, when they saw it, they were like, oh, that's bad. Uh, and then when I showed it to the police and said, hey, can we, can, can we go here and, and at least see? They said, we're not going there. And, and highly advised me not to go as well. Um, so, so anyway, but uh, people have been just exceedingly generous to me uh, throughout this whole thing. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, passing along that generosity to, to others. Thanks, JD. Sorry about that. Right there in the middle, younger person. How you doing? Uh, my name is Mike. I just saw you over there in the battlefield. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, first of all, you guys have totally inspired me. Uh, I started my own page on Instagram a few uh, about earlier in the year. But uh, my question for you guys: uh, What would you say is your uh, most underrated Civil War site or American history site, mm -hmm. or, or most underappreciated to you? Because I know there's a lot of small things that sometimes, I mean, when you see them, it, it, it it carries so much. And yeah. There's some, and they're not always the most visited site. So, what, what would that be for you? For, first off, can you remind me the name of your Instagram page so I can write it down? Uh, Frito History. F R I D D O History. Thank you, everybody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Go ahead. Yeah, you guys. Uh, Vicksburg. Love the Vicksburg battlefield. There's so much. I I had. I had two ancestors in the 22nd Kentucky that fought at Chickasaw Bayou. Come on now. Take a drink. Look, Google the 22nd Kentucky's battle flag after Chickasaw Bayou. There's nothing left of it. Um, but yeah, um, Vicksburg Battlefield, Champion Hill in particular, which I know you guys are working on preserving. Uh, one of the most important battles of the Civil War that nobody talks about. Good. Chris? Um, for Don, Gary, can we go? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would say, um, it, it, to me, it's West Point. Uh, mm. It's not only the um, United States Military Academy that created two U.S. presidents. It was 
uh, you know, people who were astronauts, senators, congresspeople. Um, it was also integral to the American War for Independence. It's where the uh, greatest traitor in American history turned his back on George Washington and almost tried to get George Washington captured by, yeah. by the British. Um, and it was a key to holding the, the upper part of the United States at that point uh, together. And if the Hudson River had fallen because of West Point falling, you know, we could have been cut in two. So I, I think that's a very underrated place. And, and especially, you know, just the military academy itself is just inspiring. But there's so much history up there. Ben, make sure you catch our footage for Gettysburg 150 as we bring artifacts from the West Point <laughs> Museum out to the battlefield. And here at Beyond the Battle, downstairs tomorrow afternoon, I think from 1 to 4. Uh, 1 to 4, you can see some of those objects and more while you're there. I see some questions over there, but J.D.? Did you have one to add? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so probably one in the past year that I visited that I really enjoyed and that I think is very underappreciated uh, is the uh, Battle of Wilson's Creek. Mm. Uh, that's, that's a battle that happens very early in the war and is often just kind of overlooked or forgotten. And it's also in a part of the country where there aren't many like major battles that take place. You, you come out to this part of the country around Virginia and things like that, you, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a Civil War battlefield. Um, Do you swing but, dead cats often? <laughs> <laughs> He's got one on his camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you, you get out there and it's a lot more sparse and yeah, I, I, I found it terribly fascinating. It's just where you just connect with some of these places. Uh, that happened to me, certainly at Blackstock, South Carolina. There's hardly anything in that park. Small Revolutionary War battlefield. And somehow there, I could picture it. Somehow there, it just worked. I had a feeling like that at Pea Ridge as well. Very cool place as well. Now, I've called on three more over here in our order. We'll do a couple more over there, and we'll probably wrap it up. So three on this side, and it is you, sir. OK, so I wanted to ask about fundraising. So. The American Battlefield Trust obviously raises money to preserve and protect. These two guys, you know, are pretty independent. So would you say that your heightened aware uh, viewership has helped with the fundraising? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'll speak out to this one first and then whomever can add on. Being a fundraising organization, I mean, we have certain limitations. But, you know, our mission only allows us to preserve land at certain places. And our videos where we talk about, how, hey, give us money, don't do as well as the other ones. But all of them together come to create an awareness where suddenly us out on the field are actually seen more than our own president. He's comfortable with that. Um, but we've become this mouthpiece of spreading of history, and a lot of it is anecdotal. We can read the comments. I just joined. I gave you $10 more. And while other organizations are bleeding members, we're staying steady, which in this day and age, younger people don't join things anymore the same way that people who aren't so young uh, used to. Uh, and, and fundraising has held pretty steady. Uh, so we have a lot of anecdotal information. We know how much money we make, say, from YouTube ads that you are forced to watch sometimes. <laughs> um, but, but our real game is to get more people involved, and then they get involved with our land preservation efforts. Let me tip it to Chris to see if there's anything else I missed. There. Yeah, I would just tip in that um, and we don't try to go out there and beat the drum on, you know, at ACHS asking for money. We think it's kind of garish to go out to, you know, West Point and ask for money for filming there. Or if we're on National Park Service land, um, you know, we'll remind people, you know, go check out our website. You know, we have content over there and everything we do is free. All of our videos are free. We have no paywalls. Um, it is our members who help to uh, pay for us to do these things. So we want to make sure that the people know that. Um, when we go out there. Sometimes we have specific fundraisers on Facebook and we do specific things, but we always do that either on our land or land we're about to preserve. So we want to make sure that there's a clear line that people don't think we're going to show up just to uh, raise money. And luckily, people don't think that. Most people want to shine light on their places. And I think that's why all three of us are, are invited to come out to, to small historic sites, large historic sites. I mean, the numbers alone open doors that you can never imagine. Mm -hmm. All they have to do on their the teams at like the National World War II Museum, I'm the guy who works at the Civil War Trust back in the day when we were still called the Civil War Trust, come and knock it on their door and they're letting us through because of the numbers that we have and things like that. So it does make a difference. Guys, anything else to add on the money front? I, no, yeah. I think both of us have spoken pretty forcefully about our support of the American Battlefield Trust because yeah. we can't make the content we make without the land that you guys preserve. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Right. It's, 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 one of the, it's one of the few organizations that, that I support financially. Mm -hmm. um, ripping some of your stuff off, I might as well throw a few bucks. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, no, we steal your stuff too, and we don't give you any money. Uh, <laughs> um, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and making it so entertaining for everybody too. Um, if you could meet one person from the past and ask them one question, what would it be? Uh, I'm going to jump in before Chris does. Uh, <laughs> either one of the Chris's. Um, I, it, it would be Teddy Roosevelt. And my question would be, do you want to go hunting? <laughs> <laughs> and he says, no. <laughs> well, I would have said Teddy Roosevelt, too. So uh, <laughs> go to Chris, and I'll have to think of an answer. Oh, man. Mine is, is probably to sit down with uh, uh, Napoleon Ooh, and yeah. ask him, what the hell were you thinking going to Russia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it's like, you had it all, Muddy. You had it all. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, Wow. Woodrow Wilson? Yeah. <laughs> Where do you sleep? How do you sleep? There's a, a well-known disdain for Woodrow Wilson that I have on my channel. Um, yeah, I'd probably say Theodore Roosevelt also. Uh, and, and I would honestly, my question to him would be, how did you wake up and get out of bed every morning after losing your mom and your wife the same day? He wrote in his diary that day, the light has gone out of my life. Uh, most people, that would just destroy them. And, and he went on to do incredible things. And I've always been in, in awe of what he made of himself after going through that. You can't open up with that question. You, you, have, to, you have to spend five days in deer camp with him. And then, and then you can ask that question. <laughs> question, question. <laughs> so, just real quick, I, I, I sound positively trite, as I often do. That's my brand, actually. But... My name is Alexander Gardner. God, where was the Harvest of Death photo taken? <laughs> you know, and then I could, I wouldn't have to get people getting mad at me all the time for not thinking their theory is right. So uh, with that, uh, we'll, we'll do one more over here, then two on the other side of the room. All right, thank you. Thank you. I am a big fan of you guys. You inspire me. I'm a historian myself. I love that you're inspiring a younger generation of history buffs. And I wanted to ask you, kind of, what is your origin story when it comes to being a history buff? What was that bug, that history bug that bit you as a kid or a young adult, whether it was a book or a movie or a person, what was that one thing? Well, it's been in the news lately, but for me, my first introduction to historical obsession was when they found the Titanic in 1985. I was eight years old. I went down to the library right away, the McKinley Memorial Library. William McKinley was born right there in town. Um, got every book on the Titanic. And that began a lifelong obsession for me where when I get interested in a topic, I just get obsessed with it for months and learn everything I can about it. Um, and then for the Civil War, it was two things. It was the Lincoln, the Gore v. Dow's Lincoln miniseries with Sam Waterston on TV. And then it was Ken Burns' documentary. And from then, I was hooked on the Civil War. Very good, guys. Um, I, I've told this story before on some of our videos, but I, I was literally born when my mom was watching Gone with the Wind. Um, Which so I've never seen. She went into went into labor, and, and um, so she says I was born to do this. But um, we used to come here to Gettysburg to stay and not actually go to the battlefield. There's a car show that's about 40 minutes to the north of here, Carlisle, and my father loved going to the car show. And I am not a car person at all. Um, but we ended up staying around town and going around to the battlefield. So as a kid, I mean, they have pictures of me all over the place, and I fell in love with it. And more and more, we would come back, not just for the car shows. And, and then the movie Gettysburg came out. Mm -hmm. I saw some reenactors out there, and that was it. I, I was hooked. We paid $90 for the VHS at the Horse Soldier when it yes, first came out. Yes, that's where my copy came from, yeah, too. We still own it. Yep. <laughs> uh, for me, my, my origin, uh, as far as, you know, what drew me into history uh, would um, be, be my, my grandpa's on, on both sides. Uh, you know, I, I remember my brother and I just, um, you know, laying awake at night listening to my grandpa tell stories or, you know, we go out and feed cattle in the morning and, and riding around the truck and everything like that. It was always, you know, asking questions and saying, you know, what was it like, um, you know, when you were you know, in the Korean War, and you know, what was it like growing up during the Depression? What'd you guys do here, and things like that. Um, so, so that that was kind of like personal stories that really kind of opened mm -hmm. things up 
uh, into uh, a broader narrative. And this is going to sound weird. If I had to name a movie that really got me into history, this is going to sound odd, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the whole, you know, uh, parallel storyline, you know, with World War II and the Nazis and everything like yes. that it really fascinated me. So it wasn't the Crystal Skull? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, we got two left, and let me let me note by the way, it's and it's him, and then in the far back over there, and then uh, right after that, we're going to be whisked away into limos, so you won't have to talk. To <laughs> no, we will. Uh, I can't they gave you a limo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got our own parking spot. We, got, uh, we will. Uh, uh oh, well, this young man might be able to ask the last question after that. Oh boy, what a special privilege! I think oh, his word. I'm really nervous uh, about that. I, I think we'll probably be around to answer. Yeah. Questions the first. <laughs> uh, my name's John. I've been following Chris and JD for a while. I've, I've bugged them on Instagram and YouTube comments all the time. Uh, I've been listening to uh, Gary and to, to Chris White on the Battlefield Trust as well. Uh, thanks to Chris and the partnership he's doing with his uh, trip agency there. I get to knock my biggest bucket list item off of going to Rome and to Florence. You're going to Italy with me? Yes, I awesome. Am. Oh, that's, oh cool. that's cool. So my my question is is what's your biggest bucket list item left your place to go? Wow. Uh, for me, Peleliu. I, mm. I desperately want to go to Peleliu. I'm, I'm going to try and make that happen in the next year. Uh, honestly, Iwo Jima would be cool as well, but access to Iwo Jima is so stinking hard. Uh, but. One of, one of my favorite books of all time is With the Old Breed by Eugene mm. Sledge. And, yeah. Um, yeah, there we go. I like you all. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so that, that, that's my top one. I, I've been really, really fortunate because of the channel. I've gotten to knock a lot of bucket list stuff off in the last two years. Uh, the UK was my big one. Probably for me now, I'd say Jerusalem. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Just one up to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been um, very fortunate to be able to travel to many of the historic sites that I went to and, and personally myself uh, on vacations. But uh, I would have to say that um, it's got to be Ewo that mm. would be where I want to go. Ewo you Chico. guys should go do a video there. Take JD with you. <laughs> hey, hey, you want a partner? Yeah. I know the guy who runs the equipment, so I can talk to the guy. <laughs> I, I have a question for the trust, basically, but I first want to personally emphasize the importance of what you guys are doing with the trust. Thank you. Uh, great grandfather, 38th Massachusetts, got wounded on the other side of the Winchester High School football field. Mm -hmm. I had to walk around the little bit of practice the Winchester High School to see where he got shot in the chest. That's why it's so important what you guys are doing, mm -hmm. and I wanted my son to see that place. So it's very important what you guys are doing, but my question for you is, has it become that much more of a challenge for you guys and what you're doing, considering the cancel culture culture attitude out there? You I'll, I'll walk and talk till I come up to you guys. Um, I'd say no. I mean, we, people, our board and other people are worried about that. Um, but you know, we had our best year on the internet during the Confederate flag controversy. Mm. Why? Not because we're, we are pro one side or another or anything like that, because we had the resource about what these civil, floor, civil war flags were. And you shouldn't have to worry about this too much if you're telling stories down in the middle mm. and with warts and all, okay? Now, if you're telling them down the middle, people are gonna tell you you're too far left and you're too far right at the same time. Absolutely. Which can be <laughs> frustrating, but it hasn't really impacted our business too much. There are certain questions you know that we we don't love to answer in public forums because we're a fundraising organization and sometimes we have secret things going on behind the scenes we don't want people to know about but i don't think and i'm going to pass it to chris white next mm -hmm. because I, it hasn't changed the core of what we do educationally we have had to ban more people because of some of it and that's on both sides by the way on my page i ban people equally if you want to say pro-north or pro-south or pro-right or pro-left because, I mean, people are, are on one street or the other ready to fight with people, and there's just no room for that, at least not in my personal life. So, Chris? No, I haven't, I haven't seen it too much. I mean, we, we initially, whenever the cancel culture started happening, you know, some of our board members were worried we were too woke or not woke enough. And, uh, you know, and then these are the same people who said, you know what? It'd be really interesting if you had a map 
and you had one side move this way of lines and one side move this way. And Gary pulls up our animated map like this one. So they weren't really watching our content. Mm. They didn't know what was out there. Um, it, it's, a lot of them do, uh, but not all of them. And um, so I, didn't, I haven't seen really anything mm. with that. And as Gary pointed out, it doesn't matter. If you're down the middle, you get it from both sides. I mean, we get it from all sides you know some people love me hate gary vice versa hate chris mikowski love sarah in the back sarah on our team back there so we see it all the time yeah guys i i one of the things i say all the time on my channel is everybody has biases just some people deny that they have biases and other people em embrace them i'm very upfront about my biases and one of the things i talk about all the time with people is i say here we're here because we love history I don't care if you're an atheist or a Christian or a Buddhist or a Muslim or if you're a Democrat or a Republican or anywhere in between. We're here because we love history. And when you throw that out there right away, you disarm that from being used against you. Uh, so I, I, there are still people who try to argue that stuff. And like Gary, I'll just block them if, if they insist on being personal about that stuff. But we're just there because we love history. And J.D., before you answer, I just wanted to tip in what Chris said. We have Battlefield in our name. And while people say, well, you're out here to Battlefield. Why are you making videos here? <laughs> and I, I had a teacher at our teacher institute in 2019 and uh, asking that question. Um, you know, and I, I used a lot of the examples of why we do this. But, you know, there, you know, there are people who say you do too much war content or you do this or that. We're the American Battlefield Trust. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, there are layers to military history. I mean, there's social, there's economic, there's all that. Yes, that's important to talk about the context. But at the end of the day, we're saving dirt and we're telling stories of history <laughs> about soldiers who are out here fighting and serving for the U.S. I mean, that's how it goes. Well, JD? Yeah, so the, the cancel culture stuff, uh, you know, concerns me and, and things like that. What, it, I try and always put a positive spin on, on everything. Um, so, so when people, you know, in, in the same video uh, call me a liberal snowflake and a Confederate sympathizer, you know, and I'm like, a vegetarian. Yeah. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> Nobody has ever been that that mean to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, to to me, that hey, that's an opportunity to engage in a conversation uh, about history. Um, you know, even even if I may disagree with that person, hey, at least we're we're talking. And if other people are, you know observing or you know thinking about it as well uh i'd rather do that than not think about it at all that's great we have one last bonus question coming but before we do don't get up and leave because we do have a last bonus question i'm a little worried about this one <laughs> you're worried yeah. <laughs> but first um guys what a pleasure uh to be up here with you guys yeah, uh, and just chat. Well, I mean, Forgiving of your precious Gettysburg 160 time, which is at a premium. There's a yeah. lot of things to see, yeah. a lot of places to drink, and here you are. <laughs> Some of you with hidden flasks. Uh, <laughs> enjoy us. We really appreciate the invite by the Adams County. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Us here today as well. <laughs> He's a funny YouTube star, right in his own right here. Come on. D do we need to? pre-screen this question before we give him the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're safe. No, the answer cannot be the Holocaust, and that's because that's the obvious answer. If you could go back in time and change one thing, what would you change? That's my son right there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Dad, you're up first. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a kid. You, you take it first. Wow. You might have to take it alone. <laughs> Remember back to the future. Okay. I would change Abraham Lincoln's running mate in 1864 to someone other than Andrew Johnson. Wow. I think that, I think that one's kind of self-explanatory, but I feel like the, those months after the Civil War, were some of the most crucial months in history, and we are still dealing with the consequences of getting that wrong. Um, if, if I could change one moment in history, I wonder what the world looks like if the guy who was driving the vehicle with Archduke Franz Ferdinand in the back, if he hadn't made a wrong turn. That was almost mine. <laughs> yeah. I, 
I, I wonder what a world looks like without that happening. Hmm. Now that we've taken the two easy ones away. <laughs> Well, I, I would, uh, let's see. Hmm. See, I'm the moderator. I don't have to answer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I usually have a few go-tos. Um, uh, but, you know, you actually took one of mine, <laughs> Archduke. But I, I would say that um, a much stronger presence at the League of Nations and mm. no Woodrow Wilson as president at that point. That's <laughs> <laughs> because I like him. Because it led us down a path, a yeah. dark path, yeah. and, um, and it led Europe down a very dark path. Yeah. And there I eliminated your Holocaust without going and eliminating the That's Holocaust. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there you have it. Thanks for the final question, Eli. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. for being here and I, I have to say I know these four guys well and in addition to being smart and talented and entertaining they are just good and kind and giving people and I'm so honored that they chose to be here with us tonight. So thank you. One more round of applause. Thank you. I drink too much water. Great here.